In this tutorial, I'll show how I use the photo match feature of SketchUp. I found it a very helpful tool to use for planning, design, and proportioning work for custom millwork projects. I'll walk you through steps I used recently to work through design and proportion issues with a mantelpiece project that I'm working on. The first step is to create a model of the mantelpiece and next to take a good digital photo of the space where the mantelpiece is going to go. And the third step is to import the model into the photograph after the photo has been set up in PhotoMatch. The end result is a pretty realistic look at the proposed mantelpiece in the actual existing space. So to begin step one of this photo match process, here's the model I created to import into the photo later. And to do that, knowing that ahead of time, I created the mantelpiece as a se separate geometry and then the wall behind it is separate and then the whole room here. And this whole thing is kind of set up like, like a movie set. It's just some generic walls that correspond to the roughly to the space where this is going to go but the mantle is a separate group just this the lumber pieces of the mantle and then the wall behind it is also separate geometry and just see how these things are spaced out like that and i'll use the back here i'll put those back where they belong so i made these pieces so that they can be brought into the photo match photograph later. And for presenting these ideas to a client, I used the, a special style here, which is called scribble on masonite. But I'm gonna switch this back to one of the default styles so that the lines are clean and straight and they'll make more sense in the photo image later. So close that, shut off the shadows, I'm just going to copy some geometry here. These three parts, the mantle, the wall behind it, or the bump out for this fireplace, and the TV. Let's grab the stove too while we're at it. So I'm just going to go Control c while I'm in this model. And that's the first step for this process is to have your model created and then be able to grab the groups and components out of your model to bring into a photograph. And the more you know ahead of time of where the model is going to go, or the simpler the process will be so that you can import the stuff into a photograph. But I think once you watch the process go through, it'll make more sense the things that you want to think ahead about when you're doing this photo match process. The second part of this photo match process is to take a photo of the space where your model is going to go and then import that photo into SketchUp and set it up with the photo match feature. For this example, I took three separate photos of the interior of the space where a map is going to go. I've got this angle, there's another angle here, and then this third one is what I ultimately used. And when I think about this, I, I want to figure out where I want to view this from in the space. It's not that much trouble to set up. You could do numerous angles of the space and then put the same model into them. But the photos need to be set up in SketchUp individually. So here's an angle kind of from the dining room front door. And this one was, the angle's funny. It, there wouldn't be any benefit really to show the mantle in this view. And the one I ultimately selected was this third one. So this is the photograph that will pull into SketchUp. I like the, the angle, the amount of the room that this picture takes in will show the mantle well. And you can see here where I made some styrofoam mock-ups and put those on site to help the owners visualize the final size of the mantle and how it fits in the space. And then the photo match is a step beyond that, as you'll see. Now 
now that we have a model created and a photo taken for the photo match process, we'll start back again at the model view. Just for a refresher, I'm going to select this geometry for import into the photographs. I have these groups selected. I'm just going to say Control C for those. Then we'll open a new model. And it's important to do it in this order because if you bring the photo into the model when you rescale it, it kind of goose things up. So the best way, the cleanest way is to just bring your photo in, get it set up, and then paste your model into the photo once the photograph is sized. So we'll just go to camera, match new photo, and then navigate through your file to wherever your the photographs you want to use are located. Mine are buried down in some job folders. So I've selected the one I want. It shows up in the preview window. And once I select open, SketchUp will bring that in and open it up here in this view eventually. And you'll have to take my word for that because for whatever reason, my screen capture recording and SketchUp Photo Match won't work at the same time. But this is the sort of image you'll see once your photo comes in to Photo Match. You this Photo Match dialog box over here, and you got all these goofy lines drawn around on the image. The magic of this is that by adjusting these lines and various things you see on this image, it scales and sizes and sets the perspective of the photograph so SketchUp knows where your model belongs in this image. And one thing to keep in mind right away is if you change the view ever so slightly, you touch any rotator orbit or whatever, your photograph disappears and you need to click this little tab up here to get it to come back into play. So while we're doing this, we can use the zoom in and out, but none of the rotator pan uh, that makes the picture disappear. So the photograph I took, I want to have a clear line of sight for a vertical line and then a place to set the axis in here. And so I'm just going to start by sticking this axis. You can see when I grab it, it turns into a hand and I'm just going to slide it down into this corner. You can zoom in and out all you need to. And I know that this corner right here is going to be a good place for this axis. And this is something you'll just figure out from experience. But you can see the blue line doesn't line up vertically or anything like that. So what we want to do is select these lines and get them to line up with the axis. So these, the green lines are going to be side to side in the photograph. I'm just going to take one of these and I'm just going to make it parallel to this angle at this where the ceiling meets the wall. You can just move these lines around and see how these things move. Endpoints don't have to be anywhere particular. You just want the lines to be parallel. You know, and that line's a little bit fuzzy. So let's just put it over here where we can see the break between the ceiling and the wall a little clearer. I'm just going to move these things around. And the more spread you can get on these lines, the better. So I'm going to take another green one and put it down here. Let's see, let's stick it on the bottom of this window. That's a pretty easy to see line. And once you've done this a couple times, or even the first time watching this tutorial, you'll get an idea of the sort of angles you want in your photo so that you can match these lines up. I'm going to take a red one and we're going to get it lined up over here on the top edge of this window. It's a pretty distinct line. I'll take the other red one and put it on the bottom line over here. You can see how it adjusts all these other lines. There's, a, there's some disparity here because there's some parallax in the, the lenses of cameras. But for the most part, you can see when this is dialed in. I'm trying to zoom in up here so we can see that that blue line is tracking very closely to plum in the corner. And sometimes, if I want to get that to move, you can see how this plumb line moves with this green one real easy. So I'll just tweak one of those lines to get the center of the photograph lined up pretty well. So we've got all these things set up nicely. 
And when I set this mantelpiece five feet high, we're gonna go done here with this. Now that we have the axis set and the picture's perspective lined up, we close this dialog box, and then we're gonna do something here. This, on, when I was on site, I set this temporary mantle. That was set at five feet. So I'm just, I've clicked on the green axis because that's a given point. I'm gonna bring it up to the top of this and just I'm just ignoring what the tape measure says. And I'm gonna click on this red axis and we'll go up to the same point. So now we have an intersection to draw a line to. So we'll draw a line from this axis up to this intersection of these guidelines. And now I, I pivoted out of the photograph view, which is okay at this point. I'm just gonna go up and draw this line up to the intersection of those guidelines. We'll put the photograph back in place here. And what we want is that line to be five feet tall because it's, it's to the top of the mantle, which is a known dimension in the photograph. The key thing that I'm doing here is drawing a line in this photo match that relates to something in the model that I know the exact dimension of. That's the key. So now we're going to take the tape measure tool and measure this line. And you can see down the value control box it says it's 6 foot 5 and 11 16 But we want it to be 60 inches. So I'm just going to type in 60, enter. And what you want to get is this uh, dialog box that says, do you want to resize the model? And we're going to say yes. And you can see it snaps there. And now if we click this line, right click it for entity information, that line is 5 feet or 60 inches, same difference. And so now the photograph, the perspective is set and the dimensions are set. And it's ready to import our model geometry. With our photograph set and scaled, now it's time to import the geometry, which we can do with the control V and paste our model into this photograph. And you can see it's kind of jumping all around. It doesn't really know where to go. And when we place it, it kind of turns transparent. And that's all okay. I touched the, the orbit key there. So now you can see this model is just kind of floating out there. But we have this line that we created, and you know that's a given. And I strategically placed that at a corner where this mantelpiece will sit. I'm just going to select this stuff and group it all so it moves around together. And if we go back to the photo, you can see that the, the model geometry is 90 degrees to where it needs to be. So I'm just going to go here and pivot this model in the blue direction. Just going to swing it 90 degrees to get it to line up. And that has to do with the axis between the model, the SketchUp file where we created the model, and then this photograph are kind of separate. So with that selected, now how we position this is the top of this mantle is five feet off the ground. It's in the corner of the, the wall of the house. So I'm grabbing that corner, and then I'm just going to stick it right on the end of that line. There's a lot of geometry moving around here, so the model is pretty jumpy. It's not really wanting to go there. It's not quite sure what I'm trying to do, so I'm going to hover over the end of this line for a moment and grab this corner, and that should help it click on there. And then it's being stubborn. I'm just going to leave this in the video because if this happens to you while you're doing this, you'll be frustrated. So now you can see that the back corner of the mantle and these guidelines and the top of that straight line are all lined up at the same place. So now when we click on the living room model, the photograph, it brings the fireplace in and it places it right, just right in place where we want it. You can see it's transparent and the, the model is lining up very accurately with the mock-ups that were live on site. So we have the placement we're looking for, but it still looks funny here. And the reason that is is because we need to go into the styles and edit this, which we'll do next by going to Window and Styles. And we want to go to let's take this Edit tab and drag our box down. And you can see that there's a 
foreground photo and once we click this off you can see that that toggles the image on and off and that toggles the photograph on and off but we want to make the foreground photo become opaque like it is there so we can shut this off and you can see now how the model has superimposed itself into the photograph and that's a pretty clear representation of the look we want to get and now that I've orbited the photograph goes away I'm just going to delete these guidelines I'm going to go up here into view and hide the axes to get rid of those lines and then click the photograph again and you can see how our model just swings into place and one of the differences you see here is that if we turn this model to the view I use the wireframe view you can see the TV the space for the TV in the photograph is smaller than the space or than the size of this TV in my model and that's all okay because this is a live SketchUp model so we can just go in and edit these things so if we take this TV I'm just gonna shrink it down some by moving some of this geometry let's just move it 10 inches here move the other side 10 inches and what we're doing here is is we're creating or we're moving the geometry that is that we copied and pasted out of the model so that the other SketchUp model where we got this geometry still exists and it's not getting these changes made to it. So you still have that model to go back to and we're just we're just kind of doctoring up the one that we imported. And so now when we bring this back into the photograph, you can toggle back between the view and that TV is more like the size it's going to be in this space when it's done. The shadows still work. They look stupid in here just because of the way things are set up. Um, but they can, you can toggle them on and off. In this one, we're going to go to shadow settings and take the shadow off the ground. And that's not an unrealistic view of this fireplace with light shining in the window. So I hope that that gives you an idea of the steps to get this accomplished. It's a little bit difficult to produce this video to show all these steps, but I hope that it gives you enough of an idea so that you, you'll try this on some of the projects or of your own. And after you've done it a few times, uh, A, it gets easier, and B, you'll have a better result, and C, it'll be less frustrating. So I hope this helps you out, uh, take some of your modeling to the next level, and thanks for tuning in to the Digital Job Site.